Are you solving the problem that your client thinks they have? Hmm. What problems? I think that's a really you, good question. What problems are you solving? Hey, Eric here with 30 by 40 Design Workshop. Every Friday, I meet with and help design professionals enrolled in my A&E course to discuss their businesses and the challenges that they're facing. And this is an excerpt from a recent conversation I had with Sarah Lebner. She's just started her architecture practice in rural Australia, regional, as she refers to it, and her business is called Kui Architecture. As I reviewed her client information package, it was beautifully designed, extremely detailed, and pretty overwhelming. I wanted to challenge her to think about things from her client's perspective. Let's get into our conversation. Kui Architecture is about um, calling out to regional people to build low carbon homes um, that can and fulfilling lives in them. Essentially, that's it in a nutshell. So I'm pursuing uh, the sort of three factors to pursue. It's a uniquely sort of regional location, a rural aspect. And um, I'm specialising in energy efficient and low embodied carbon. So I'm just putting that under the title low carbon. Also, from a design theoretical perspective, I think a lot of my motivation and perspective comes from focusing on what's meaningful to those people in that place, what's going to help create a setting for them to live the best life that they can, match their values and, and live a fulfilling life. Okay, interesting. I'm looking at your um, information packet that you sent me on page six. It's mm -hmm. showing me mini service, full service, and plus service. Those are my three choices when I want to work Those with you, Those are the right? three architecture services. Yep. Yep. And then uh, before that, there's microservices. Is that different than mini services? Yes. So they're more the uh, consultancy feasibility okay, that connecting was you with science. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, I mean, my first impression when I look at this information packet, it's, it's fantastic. Like, I love it. But I don't want to be your full services client and getting all this stuff. One of the things that this um, made me think of immediately was if you had a landing page on your website that basically said, you're going to have to choose what these parameters are. But if it's like, I'm a homeowner... I am thinking about doing a project in X area and mm. this is the step that I'm at. This is my budget. And you have them fill in maybe two or three radio buttons and then it delivers yeah. them to, to make a choice between one of two things. Because when I see the service matrix, I can see how your brain operates. I mean, I remember working this way in large firms too, and I love doing this stuff, but as a client, I'm like, what, uh, I'm not sure what I need too here. Much. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. too much. I just think it's too much. And and this exists already and it can exist behind the scenes, but it, it kind of speaks to maybe a larger question, which is, are you solving the problem that your client thinks they have? Mm. What problems? I think that's a really you, good question. What problems are you solving? Um, the immediate answer that comes to mind is that a lot of clients start with a problem they think they have, but really they have a lot more problems than that. <laughs> uh huh. Um, Tell me about that. You know, well, uh, there's a few different um, uh, audiences uh, here because I, I will I will keep doing work in Canberra, which is a very different okay. place to regional Australia. Um, uh, they're, uh, you know, they're in an urban area. They're probably more uh, familiar through friends what what's available, and um, um, they're a very educated and affluent sort of uh, urban area generally. Okay. Um, so they those people come understanding a lot about sustainability, being fairly educated about um, sustainable architecture, and that's that's their driver. And what I'm already seeing in a more regional area where people just haven't even considered using an architect before because they would have to travel three hours to talk to someone anyway. And um, there's, uh, there's this real distrust of people from the city servicing people in regional areas. They're coming to it from a point of they don't even know how to make a project happen. There's not a lot of um, custom builders around. So I think their, their problem is almost how do I even do this? Who will you help me find a good builder? Like we don't even know who to yes. talk to. Yes. Um, I love this. This yeah, is amazing. They, they nothing about it's, the process. So they know they want something and they know they deserve something, 
but they're just not really sure what it is or how to go about it. Yeah. So how does your information packet speak to that? Yeah, that's a really good question. I hadn't, I don't think I'd really thought of it from that point of view. Um, and that's, that's also something that can really easily be brought into, um, uh, marketing and talking to the community and social media. Um, I mean, if I look at, this is an amazing page and I love it and it, you're selling me on it because I'm an architect and I know what all these things mean. Architects talking to architects. <laughs> that's who you're talking to, right? No, <laughs> you're, you're, you're not. And, and I love it and it's cool, but you and I both know that the people who are going to hire you out there, they're speaking a different language. And, yeah. and you just said some really powerful things that is actually not very unique to that situation at all. I hear those yeah, same yeah. things here. Yeah. I, I speak to people every week who say those same things about their clients because it's yeah. confusing. It's intimidating. And so what you need to do, I feel like is start kind of workshopping what that process looks like through their eyes. And, yeah. and it may mean if you're already getting phone calls, it may mean hopping on a few phone calls or Skypes and just saying, talk to me about this. Like, what are your fears? Because I am trying to make this easier for people in your situation. And, um, those very words on the phone call or on a Skype is you can use those words to sort of draw your next clients in. And yeah, you can also use that as content. I mean, you can be recording that conversation and say, you know, with permission, of course, but just say like, look, this is so-and-so they, they had the same fears you did. And look, this is how we do this. This is how I walk yeah. you through the process. And this is why it's better because, you know, I, you and I both know all the reasons why low carbon, you know, building efficiently and sustainably is important. And you may have a subset of clients in Canberra who already know those things, but mm. I don't feel like those are one of the top three things why people necessarily hire architects. I'm not sure yeah. like ever. <laughs> I mean, if we're, <laughs> if we're being honest, you know, my take on this, when someone asked me about sustainable construction and design is like, that's kind of the base level of service. That's what we, that's baked into what we do. So it's, it's that's like, yeah. you get that no matter what the, the bigger conversation for us is, you know, you're, and you're starting to speak to this in your information packet, the emotional aspects of this thing. I mean, I made a list of a few things like, you know, what are the most important things to potential customers, like to save money or make money, like efficiency, yeah. energy, valuation, life cycle costs. Like those are all things that you could speak to with a low carbon home, with a sustainable design, uh, but you're not, you're just, you're leading with low carbon is important. But as the consumer, I'm like, well, why should I care about that? I mean, okay, yeah, better for the environment. But if, it, if we all acted in the interest of the environment, just naturally, we wouldn't have this problem, right? Yeah. We're, yeah. we're just selfish creatures. And so, you know, we want security, space, lifestyle, comfort, privacy. Uh, you want to mitigate risk. Some people want a trophy. And like you said, it's, there's this whole unknowable aspect of working with a build, how do I hire a builder? Like all these things are un unknowns and I want your information to really speak to that because, you know, if people hear you speaking and addressing their exact concerns, it's a no brainer. You're going to get yeah. the job. Yeah. I think that's a really excellent point to mull on. And I, I need to keep reminding myself that the firm I worked for in Canberra were the sustainable residential firm. So, so people came to us asking for that, and I need to um, I need to remember that that's that's not the the case here. That's not the case anymore. They're not they're not primed with that. Right. That perhaps primed with that strong motivation. I did have a question about discipline. Discipline? <laughs> Tell me. It, well, yeah. I, I can't believe you're not disciplined. Well, no, yeah. Look, I I um I am disciplined in a certain way, <laughs> but um, I think I mentioned in my email I'm not a perfectionist, which I mean has served me well in 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 getting stuff done. Right? They yeah. um, all the entrepreneurs who say just ship it and see how it goes. But I also just have this 
uh, admiration for how polished everything that you produce is. And um, I think I have a bit of a fear um, that I don't have my team around me now who are very good at, you know, photoshopping and making things beautiful yeah. and um uh, i just the last as i think i said the last five percent of every task kills me a little bit inside <laughs> yeah so yeah I'm, i i i'm not sure if there's an answer um but it was something i was i guess have you always been like that do you feel like you're like that or um or it's something you had to work on yeah so i was not good at polishing things that especially very early on because in this business and, and honestly, I mean, I treat from 2013 till now, it's like, I'm like a different person than starting this business has completely changed oh, really? me. And uh, I mean, just because, I mean, you're about to find out here that having to put food on the table that comes just from your sole effort is an amazing empowering experience and it just changes how you operate it you know it's like the the hungry wolf runs faster right like that's that was always my motivation and so if i look at early days in my business i didn't have time to polish because i was running like i mean you don't see a lot of the stuff that i made in 2013 because it wasn't very polished and i chose yeah, what man. to put out there and even the stuff that i put out there i mean go back and look at it it's bad it's not good it's not good by my standards. Today. I will. I'll hunt it out. <laughs> yeah. And, and what I think, I mean, if doing the last 5% polishing, that is the thing that keeps you from shipping the work, as you said, like it's non-negotiable. You have to ship the work. So you have permission to not polish what everybody does that. And yeah. it's just what you choose to show and what, what you choose to talk about. I, I always think about, there was a video that I made in, I think it was 2017. So 2017 was a real like pivotal year for my YouTube channel. Things really changed because I learned a lot about storytelling and I made this one video about like a day in the life, but, you know, I was just like, got the camera. It was like a snow day and I went out and around and I was designing stuff in the studio and yeah. the most watched and most commented on segment of that video was where I screwed something up in the video. So I'm sketching on this elevation and I was just like frustrated and it sucked and it's just not up to my standards. And that's the thing that resonated with people. It's not the polished stuff because it's not real. So if yeah. you look at my stuff and say, okay, well, that's part of his brand. I, I appreciate that because I like the privilege that I have now to polish things is I have time. You know, I can do that. I'm working with one client at a time. You don't have time to do that. Yeah. You don't have the resources yeah. to do that. And if you try and polish everything, you're going to fail because you need to do a lot of things. You're scratching lotto tickets right now and you have to scratch a lot of tickets to find the winners. And that doesn't involve polishing. You're just in a different phase. So I, I would say aspire to that if that's what you want in the future. But right now you're in the grinded out phase. You're in the down and dirty phase. You're in the phase where you're just going to be real and scrappy. And if that means, you know, putting a GoPro on your dash while you're driving out to a remote site, that's cool. And I, people really like that. So yeah. like, it's not like you have to try and be like the, the perfect image of what an architect is supposed to be. It's what makes it cool is it's you doing this. And like, that's why I would watch it. I mean, they, they always say like YouTube is about you. <laughs> so don't try and make it this like perfect thing. And I don't know if you're considering doing video or not, but whatever it is you're making, just know that you have to get it out there. And that's more important than the polishing part. I'm so glad I asked that. That's, that's um, the really encouraging. I am going to go back and look at your videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you don't have to watch too long to get the whole feeling for it. It's pretty bad. It's like low energy. Yeah. <laughs> but, that's, I mean, uh, the, that's really fascinating that you feel that you um, change, changed a lot over that time. I mean, uh, of, of course, we all change over time. But um, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. And I, I mean, that's been a big learning point and something I've come to terms with and grown with over the last few years is realizing that nothing is ever ever its perfect version of itself um Gosh. as long as it's fine and then you just work on it forever <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> processes and things um a big learning learning curve for me so yeah something will go out soon and um st yeah start experimenting as you say see what happens <laughs> i'm impressed with all you've done and i'm excited for all that lay ahead and i mean to have three jobs on your boards like before day one is pretty awesome 
So I, yeah. if I can help you out in any way, please do reach out. It was great chatting with you and good luck. Oh, thanks so much, Eric. This, um, this chat's really um, invigorating for me. So I'll, um, I'll definitely be revisiting parts and yeah, carrying it with me. Thanks great. very much for your time. Yeah, thank you. All right, take care. You too. See Bye. Bye-bye.